Hello drone racers, this is the, oh, I'm going to screw this up already, Xiaomi, 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 it's, it's the Mi drone, it's my Mi drone, and it is the most technologically advanced drone I have ever flown. It has blown my mind how good this thing is. So just right off the bat, if you're watching this, to compare this with a Phantom, that's not what this video is, I have never owned a DJI product. So I can't compare this directly. I never owned one because they're freaking expensive. The Phantom 3 was $1,000 and the Phantom 4 now is. You can get a Phantom 3 SE or something now for six or 700 bucks, but the Mavic is super expensive. What this is, is a 4K 3D gimbal, GPS does everything I possibly want and I paid $375 for this thing. And that's how we're gonna look at it. $375 for an amazing piece of technology. Eventually I'll have a DJI, I'm sure. I really want a spark of all of them. We're gonna look at what this is. And in this video, we'll have some test footage. I'll probably show some up randomly, but this is mainly about getting it set up because it's a little tricky and I'm gonna show you why and how to overcome that. Now this is not really an unboxing video. Obviously I've already gotten it out of the box, but I wanted to show you just the layout, the care that they put into this. There are individual boxes here and everything is labeled on the order to take things out. The drone was laid in very nicely and just the fact that they labeled it gave me a good confidence there was a lot of really nice attention to detail. And then I got to the manual and it is 100% in Chinese. Oh, not 100% USB. There is some English. Now I know that's a USB cable because it comes with one. And yeah, that's that's it. Everything else. Everything else is in Chinese. I thought I could still get it going just looking at the pictures, but I really wasn't able to. So step one, in the description, I will link to the English manual. There is an English manual for this. You can get in a PDF. You're definitely going to want that assuming you read English, which I would assume if you're listening to this video. So this is the 4K version of the drone and all the lettering and layouts and buttons are gold. If you have the 1080p version, it's all red. So if you have the gold one there, you know, you've got the 4K one for sure. And one of the things, the props I really like, these took me just a little bit to figure out how to get on the first time. These are nice brushless motors. They don't have any way to attach a prop in a traditional method that I'm used to. And here's the props, which are humongous. And I was trying to set this, so it seems like there I twist and there's a little arrow here which you have to look at and you can see here which one it's pointing at. So there the arrow is pointing at the unlock. And then you slide this on and get it lined up. So there's a notch here on the bottom and there's this piece on the top. So you just feel until you get that lined up and you push it down. There we go, get it, there we go. It'll push down, so you push it down, it's kind of spring loaded, and then twist it locked. And there the prop is locked on. And that is super duper easy. Because these don't turn nearly as fast as our racing quads, that's probably plenty good enough. But it's really convenient because this thing is humongous. I don't wanna leave the props on all the time. And it's really easy to take them off and put them on, depending on what I need. The legs are spring loaded, so there's a little lever on the side if you want to uh, pull them open, you can pull them flat. And if you take the camera off and you set these flat, it ends up being really flat. So here we'll take a look at the camera. It's also got just a little uh, spring loaded lock here. So you slide that and I've got a case coming for this. It's not here yet. But it'll make it really nice to be able to put the camera in to store that in the case and to put these legs down and the whole thing goes really nice and flat. Here you can look and see how small that is. So that works out really well. And then they just go down and they pop in place and they lock in really nicely. There is also a sonar here that I believe that's what this is to help determine height and keep it locked in place. And I think this is a down facing camera which helps keep it locked in place when you're not moving because this stays in place way better than any other drone I have ever used. I've used GPS, I've used dual GPS drones. This thing doesn't move and it's probably because of that camera right there so the 4k camera is set up it is a full 3d gimbal so it will rotate so it'll yaw and go up and down and it uh it rotates this way 
So that would be roll, I guess, and pitch, and I don't know what the term for a gimbal is. On the back, it has a USB port. I've not tried that yet to see if I can just pull right off the card that way. And then there is an SD card slot, so I've got a 32 gig, really high quality SD card in here. Because this is 4K, you're gonna need a good one. The one that I used for the Tyrannus from the hardware store is not gonna cut it on this one. The radio kind of surprised me with how basic it is. It doesn't have any kind of screen, and even some of the $150 drones I've been flying recently have a screen that shows me input, but it uses your phone for all of that. But this thing is supposed to have a two kilometer range, and it might even go further than that. Part of that is because the quality of this, the transmitters that it has, two kilometers for control isn't that big of a deal. Two kilometers for FPV is because this actually transmits and receives. Your phone does not make a Wi-Fi connection to the drone. Your phone makes a Wi-Fi connection to this as one of its options, and it does that through the bottom here. There is a USB charging port and then a regular USB port. So mine at least came with a Wi-Fi dongle here that connects into this. And then this transmits Wi-Fi that your phone connects to. So all the communication is done between the drone and your radio. So that's how you get such amazing range. Your phone only has to connect to this, which is, is, is right here. It can handle that. Still with that, it does come with a USB cable. It's a micro USB cable though, and I'm an iPhone guy, so I was able to use my lightning cable to connect to that, and we'll cover the pros and cons of that in just a little bit. There's not a lot of buttons here. You turn it on, and so step one, to turn it on, you don't just press the button. That just shows you the battery indicator. You press it, and then you hold it down, and then I'll turn it on. So right now both of these are red, meaning I don't have a link to the drone at all. This is auto launch. Uh, I can't do that because it's locked in. This is the regular mode and return to home. I thought this was a little cheesy when I looked at the manual online, like that that's it really. But it's nice and easy to see. So I'm flying, if I wanna to return to home, I just flip it over. So then here on the top, I have the phone holder. So you have to get these out of the way and angle that up and then you put your phone right here and it's built in and it has a enough of an angle that it works pretty well. The only other thing are two buttons on the back. One is for taking photos and one is for starting the video and it will show you on your phone when you are doing that, but you can control that all through here. Oh yeah, one more. Uh, then there are knobs, I forgot about these. So this controls the altitude, the angle of your camera so you can just pitch it up and down so it's the it's the pitch knob and then this one controls the camera so it controls I don't remember which setting it's it's uh, it's a brightness setting basically I'm not a technical photo guy sorry the gimbals on this are acceptable they're not these are not racing gimbal gimbals these are not hall effect gimbals but they really don't need to be you're not racing this this is not a racing drone even though it is pretty fast then to turn it off same thing Click, hold, done. The battery is a whopper. This thing is huge. And in one side it says English, it's 15.2 volts, maximum 17.4 volts. It is a 5100 milliamp battery. So it's pretty heavy. It actually has two sets of connectors on here, which both plug in to the drone and the charger that it comes with. And mine did come with a US style plug, so that was nice. It's really, really weird. It's this little lipstick case type thing on this cord and you pull this open and then inside of this are two prongs. So it's very well protected and you just slide that on either side. At least I hope it's either side because I've used either side. You plug it in there and then it goes through and charges the battery. So it's easy to use, it's just really weird. I've never seen anything like that. Now I'm going to put in the battery so you can see that I have taken the props off. It shouldn't do anything. This is even safer inside, but just to be safe, just in case, slide that on. Then the battery indicator works exactly the same as it does on the remote. One button and you can see the charge. So you press and then hold and it will turn on. And this whole thing will start beeping. So I am going to redo this and attach the camera because we're gonna need that for the next steps. To turn it off, you do the same thing. Click, hold, this little light will go across, three, two, one, and off. And the whole thing shuts down. So we'll just pop the legs down here. Slide the camera back on. I 
I'll say the camera is one of my points for concern a little bit. I know DJI makes a big deal about the gimbal holders and trackers, to, especially on the Mavic, to make sure it doesn't move, but you have to take it off before you fly. I think the idea is to not walk around or carry this thing. Um, there, it just pops right on. Other than like moving it around like this, when you the goal is to have it in a bag and take it off each time. It's got really big connectors on it, so I don't think they're going to wear out. It's not like there's tiny connectors there to wear. I think that'll be okay. But now we've got it reconnected and we'll power it on again. So there, it took probably 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and then it paired this light turned white. So I still can't take off. It tells me right there on the screen without a phone connected at all, I'm not in a safe takeoff setting. I don't know why, but I do at least have it paired. So now we're gonna fire up the app. So now I put the USB Wi-Fi module in there and this is a really easy option. You've got the MIRC and it has, this, I don't know if it's a serial number or whatnot, it's tied to this one. So I can just click that and connect. So this is one of your options. So I've got two apps here, the Me Drone, which I just went to the app store and searched for Me Drone. If you scan the barcode in the manual, you'll get this Chinese version, which I got and I tried and I'll explain why. I didn't end up needing it though. So I've got Me Drone, we'll launch that. So now it'll come up and it'll ask how I want to connect. Here I'm going to connect this time via Wi-Fi Connect. Hit Connect, and it will. One of the things I can change on this, which is nice, is the return to home. So, oh, good. Of course. So here's an update. It automatically will download or set up an update. So we'll go ahead and get this. Naturally, this happens while I'm trying to do a review. So here now we're going back in after the update finished. Here, I like that they give little tech tips so you can hold down both buttons to do an emergency shutdown. If it's going crazy, you just drop it right there. So here is the first thing. Now that we're in low GPS precision because, hey, we're in my basement. I'm surprised I've even got seven or six GPS signals. So that's pretty good. Maybe it's looking out the windows right next to me here. It shows me battery percentage up in the corner, altitude distance that I've traveled. It's nice. Compass interfered because, again, it's in my basement. And see this, see this map? And it shows you right there on the map, your GPS coordinates. But this is the first problem I had where it was extremely frustrating. And we'll get this out of the way right away. That's not where I am. That's not even close to where I am. So there are a lot of settings available on this, but that was one of the problems I had. And I was terrified to try and fly it. Like, okay, well, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe I can still fly it. But I was afraid it would take off into the air. It would figure out it was in the wrong spot and then automatically fly to wherever that is. And then it would just be gone. So that, that was a problem. So it, I ended up finding a fix. Here it is. Under the settings, which is this little gear button, we'll skip forward mo through most of it here to the map. And here on the bottom is... Uh, enable coordinate correction and that is selected uh, it says this feature only recommended for use in China and I wasn't sure when I was getting started whether that meant on or off and it came shipped with that on so I turned that off and then left and then there we go there is my cul-de-sac that I fly on and it that fixed the issue the other thing I did that I like is I switched it to satellite map because I want to be able to see and then there you can even see that's pretty much where I am in my house. That's the corner of the basement or corner of the house that my basement's in. The drone thinks it's outside. So it shows two things on here. It shows the location of the drone and the location of the controller slash phone, which is really nice for some of the options that are available, being able to see both of them. And I like this satellite view because here's the strip that I fly down. Here's the satellite view of that's the area that I usually will go. It's right at 200 meters. I've measured it. So if I want to fly it down to there, I can see on here how far away I am from those trees. Then with a click down here, the arrow key, it will move it right back to where I am centered. I have a lot of flight options. If I click this zigzaggy arrow thing, I have a lot of flight options. They're all grayed out because I'm not eligible to use any of them right now. I don't qualify because I don't have enough GPS signal and my compass is bad. So I can press this to take off or land, and I I don't usually use this landing option, but a couple times it's been really handy. I also have a return to home option here if I don't want to use my switch. I have an orbit, so it will just circle around me with the video. It'll do a droney. It'll do a waypoint. So with the waypoint, I can't I can't even select it right now. 
and, but I can choose on the map where I want it to fly and what altitude for each of those points and it will just fly around to it. So if I want to fly down to that 200 meters, that will let me go up to 500 meters. So it won't let you go, it won't let me fly to my brother-in-law's house two miles away, which I thought would be cool, even though I wouldn't do it because super against the rules. It, it would be cool, you can't do it, 500 meters. And then tap fly where you can just choose a certain point and it will go right there. So those are the options that you can program into it very easily. In the settings menu, the gear, we have update firmware, which we've already got. We have settings for calibrating the compass, which I would need to do. And when we take this outside and look at uh, some outside flights and go through all these settings there and how they all look, we'll uh, go through calibrating the compass. Beginner guide, which is really nice if you're just getting started. It goes through and it's seven pages talking about safety, learning about the drone, what's how to control it, what the sticks do, how to start and stop the motors, auto take off and land. It's a, just a nice little guide. Right below that, if you're getting started, there's beginner mode. So under beginner mode, you can only go up to 50 meters and only 100 meters away from you. It's really nice if you're getting started and you're a little terrified and you don't know the controls. I, I know these controls like the back of my hand, but a lot of people don't if they're getting started. It also doesn't let you customize some of the other settings. So I'll leave that off, but it's a nice touch to be able to make sure you don't get out of control. Uh, GPS mode settings. So now that I'm not in beginner mode, I can choose how fast I go between 3 meters per second and 16 meters per second. And that's slow and that's fast. Hey, go figure. So I've got it right in the middle. And 10 meters per second is pretty quick still. By default, it shipped with the distance limited to 500 meters turned on. So I turned that off. It gives me a nice warning to say, be, be careful. And I also have a limit of flight altitude. I believe this was set to 120 meters, which is about 400 feet. So it's not a bad limit there. If you want to go up to 500 meters, depending on where you go, some places that might be okay. Um, but for here, it's kind of nice that we can go and it helps you stay within the rules. Yes, I agree. And then the altitude of return to home. So to make sure you clear over everything, minimum is 30 meters, but you can actually go up to 120 meters, basically the maximum altitude that you should be going at. So uh, you know what? Going a little higher wouldn't be bad. I know I'm going to clear everything at 50 meters, and I also know in my airspace nothing is flying at 50 meters, not even the helicopters that around that do fly kind of low. I always keep an ear out, but they're not even going to fly that low. They better not. So VPU mode. So this is a mode. I'm going to have to remember these because I had to look them up. VPU mode is an ATTI mode. Is One of them is for flying inside. So this will say um, fly inside very carefully. Accident for indoor flight is not including the insurance if you bought the extra insurance. It keeps it at a very low altitude. So it has a special rule for flying around inside. I haven't tried it. I don't have any desire to fly this in inside. I wouldn't recommend it. It's too big and scary for me, but it's there and available. Then ATTI mode is, let's see, oh yes, it is basically acro mode. So this will turn off everything, turn off the GPS. Um, it's just attitude mode I think is probably what they're going for here so there you can switch back and forth between the modes on the dial there again with this I don't I don't want that I just want it to stay level keep my camera beautiful so I can choose imperial units which I actually prefer metric on this headlight settings so it does have headlights on it that you can control how bright they are um, IMU settings so you can basically auto level I think that's what that was our remote control calibration, so we don't want to do that right now. Stick mode, I've got mine in mode 2. So right dial mode, I mentioned it by default includes the EV value. You can also have it use the headlights. I haven't done any night or late flights to use the headlights to see how they go, but maybe we will try that in uh, one of the future videos. And then the third mode is switch between GPS and ATTI, but you have to enable ATTI for that. Wi-Fi settings is connected, RC pairings, so that'll pair it with the uh, remote that you're using here. Battery info, so what is one of the things I found interesting? No, no, I might have messed up the remote. So now the voltage is 4.11, but I have seen those over 4.3, so I kind of found that interesting. Whether these are HVs or whether they just overcharge them, I don't know. So you can calibrate the gimbals on the camera, but mine has been really good. I have not had to do that. 
camera settings so you can choose NTSC PAL and then I have mine set to the default of 4K but if you want to do 1080 30 frames per second you could do that and it, the storage would last forever or if you want to do 100 frames per second or 60 frames per second you have a couple of options for that it can't do 4K 40 frames per second but it still has some pretty good options so there we go there we're back in my house the other thing we can do then is control the camera there's the 4K camera on it which is uh, is set here there's a option right here or you can use the buttons on the back that I showed to start recording so there we're recording the left hand not stick but the knob on the corner will actually use it to look down and then look up it looks way out of focus because this is not a macro camera it's not made for recording things two inches away from it uh, to switch back you click the same view again and then we also have a number of settings so you can set EV saturation contrast contrast white balance um, I will leave mine on the defaults across the board and the quality has been uh, really really good so a couple of times I have had problems when I flew far away with touchy Wi-Fi signals on between the remote and my phone I think a hardwired connection is generally the best option and I just realized I have my headphone connected to the lightning jack so the audio quality is gonna go down in order to use the cable I've now connected the cable to the radio with a lightning jack you have to turn on personal hotspot so this will get connected it says trust this computer put in my code I'm gonna have to cut this I guess whatever this is my code who cares don't if you steal my phone now you can break in so now I will launch the app again and it's going to ask me to change my settings so I want to use USB connection and next and oh it doesn't it doesn't work well crap what I do wrong I don't know oh let's go back into personal hotspot so now I actually have to do this again go to personal hotspot again so you can't see it but now there is a device connected it, the red recording bar is overriding that but there, the blue one connected device should be there now if I go back in I do it again and now it will connect just fine so I don't know why you have to do that twice in order for it to come up at all you have to turn it on get it connected trust this computer go in and set the USB then go out and shut it off and turn it back on and then it will show a connected device and you can just go and do it again so now I have all of the same options and everything's available but I don't have any Wi-Fi it's a hardwired connection and being a network engineer I will tell you a hardwired connection is better almost every single time so those are the couple things that you need in order to get this drone going and I am a huge fan I think it is outstanding so here's one of the test flights that I did and starting out you can't even tell that anything is moving it looks like a still picture and then there we go we're gonna go through and fly some of the same test footages some of the same flights that we had with my regular flights just going through and flying it here you can get a good sense of how smooth the gimbal is it looks rock solid it doesn't angle to the side at all it doesn't move at all. It doesn't tilt up and down at all compared to some of the things I have flown recently. I got very used to that. And then when I stop, I honestly think, oh, the video has locked up. But no, they're never going again. And there's one thing you can see occasionally. When I was moving forward a lot, the quadcopter tilts forward and you saw the props. I don't know if you saw that, but they were there and that's because it's going, but then the camera didn't move. And some of you guys will be used to this kind of thing with gimbals and phantoms and whatnot. I'm not. This this thing just shocked me how good it is. Um, I'm able to fly out to the normal distance of here we're right at 200 meters and that's what it shows on the radio and then we're able to just come back and everything is recorded and I don't have all of the video settings figured out yet. Like I mentioned I'm not really a photo guy but just shocked. So there I actually hit return to home. I was flying it back and here it's going to go up to I was set to 30 meters at the time. 30 meters gives me absolutely plenty of clearance to clear over the houses and be able to pass through. And it's just pleasant. It's just smooth. I always find it peaceful just to see it it glide through versus the herky-jerky video of all the racing drones and everything else that we've got. This was, there's not a lot of wind on this day. The trees aren't moving very much. 
So if you found this video useful, there's a link down below where you can get one. And right now, I, like I mentioned, for the next couple days at least, they're about $375. That's what I paid for it. Shockingly low price compared to the $600 I was prepared to spend. So leave a comment and you tell me, do you think the Phantom is worth two to three times this, or the Mavic is worth four times this? The Mavic might be, just because of how modular, how easy it is, and it does go further, and it does some extra things. But I'm a cheapskate. I'm a, you wouldn't believe it by how much stuff I buy for this channel. But I'm a cheapskate, so when I saw this for the price and the quality that you get out of it, I was sold. I, I think it's outstanding. I am really looking forward to getting some additional, even better racing drone footage just by having this. And until next time, remember, hardwired is better than Wi-Fi.